Ming has the button, the mouth is in with King-8. And Todd Brunson, pocket aces. Raises the 2600. And notice how quickly he raised. <laughs> yeah. Didn't think about it. Didn't do any acting. Quickly raised the 2600. He's hoping that somebody else has a pretty good hand here and will raise him back. Just mm -hmm. happen to have 2000 extra dollars sitting around. And nobody's going to raise him, but Mike's going to call him with the King-8 of clubs. Mike's going to have to get real lucky here. Well, King-9-5. Bad flop for Mike Matisau. He's yeah. flopped top pair, and he just got bluffed the hand before. Brunson bets 3500 Mike might even raise here, but he just calls. Just calls. Four diamonds on the turn. Mike checks. Betting six thousand. And Todd bet six thousand, the right amount. Mike's going to quickly call again. Mike's pretty trapped in this hand. Eight of hearts on the river. Not anymore. Mike's got the best hand. <laughs> he's caught one of the five cards he needed. And he smartly checks one more time. Yep. And that eight looks relatively harmless to Todd. Brunson bets 14,500. Todd's probably putting Mike on a king jack or king ten. And Mike's going to raise here, which is another correct play. 20 more. 20 more? And he raises the 34,500. And this really shocks <laughs> Todd Brunson. Todd did not expect this. He's trying to figure how could that eight have helped Mike Mattis out? How could Mike Mattis out have had the best hand all the way here? It's not making sense to Todd. But it also doesn't make sense that Mike would make a bluff like this. Yeah. I call. And he calls. Yep. He's not going to throw away his aces. Realizes how unlucky he got. And Brunson reaches into his stash to pay off the mouth. The props will ease off a little bit. Meanwhile, Forrest raises the 1800 with his ace five. Lingren. And runs into a pair of kings. Yeah. From Eric Lingren. Who raises the 6,000. And Alessia has got King Jack. He's figuring out his props before he decides what to do in the hand. Don't see Ellie calling here with a raise and a re-raise. Raise and re-raise? Raise and re-raise. But I shouldn't say anything because it's Ellie Alezra and Ellie Alezra's gambling. <laughs> and he calls. Now there's a raise and a re-raise before the flop, and he's going to call with a King Jack offsuit. I'll trade you that. So Ellie's feeling it. What you need there, Daniel? Mm. Just don't look at my card, okay? Yeah. I'm just taking 10 from you. I check. Check. Flop comes 2-3 Jack. Terrible flop for Ellie Alezra. He's flopped a Jack. Eric's going to bet here, and Ellie's going to be tempted to call. E Dog bets 10,000. 10, and I would say Ellie is probably going to call because he's flopped top pair. Raises to 45,000. Now, this really looks like Ellie either has a flush draw or he's flopped a set. That's what this looks like to Eric Lindgren. Oh. He can't possibly be putting Ellie Lezer on a hand like King Jack or Queen Jack. So can trust him while he's doing that? <laughs> I'm not sure. Maybe Ace Pretty Jack. Close. He put 55 he's, he's honest, but he's prone to make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> so he might even have more. That's the good news. Eric's probably thinking, should I go all in right here? He's just going to call. He's going to let a card come off, make sure it's not a club. Beautiful. Then he's going to have a decision to make on the turn. Four diamonds. 
How much more we got? That's the kind of card that Eric Lingren was hoping to see. 95. Eric Lingren called 35,000 more. Ellie's got to realize he doesn't have ace king or ace queen. 60,000. Well, $60,000 bet from Alezra. You're grilling me pretty good. When he says you're grilling me, I hit the straight. Looks like you're doing it to me now. I mean, he's like, buddy, do you have a set? And do you want all my money? Do you realize I have an overpair? And are you trying to get it all here? This is a big decision for Eric Lindgren. A club didn't well, so come. I'm going to put it in. And Eric moves in. And Eric's going to move all in here. Yeah, I'm going to put it in. It's for his, his remaining 96,200. see what happens. But he said it once. He didn't hear anything from Ellie. He didn't hear an immediate I call, and he was very happy, and he said it again. I'm moving all in. Yeah. He's very happy now that Ellie did not respond immediately. It'll be 36 grand for Ellie to call. If Ellie calls, he's in terrible shape. And the only reason Ellie might call is because he might feel that Eric Lindgren is steaming from the last hand. And that's what he does. He's going to call. He's just hoping Eric Lindgren is steaming from the last hand. Go twice or once? Twice is good. Now he finds out Eric has the kings. He realizes he's in terrible shape. They're going to run it twice. Ellie's going to need to case two jacks to win it twice. Didn't get it on the first try. Now he's going to need a jack to split it. All right. Push that card up. No. Didn't get it there. And Eric Lindgren pushed all his chips in, was not sure what the outcome was going to be. Thought, maybe Elia Lezer does have a set. Elia Lezer put the pressure on, but Eric Lindgren made the right decision. And that puts E-Dog up about 200 grand. And Elezer has a little bit of a better hand than he did last time. Pocket sixes. He'll raise to 21 here. Same raise as he did with the six deuce of clubs. Mm -hmm. David Gray is out. Ted Farr is playing a little snug tonight. Daniel Negrano, of course, is going to call with a 5-3 <laughs> of hearts. And he does. And Lingren does as well. Eric Lingren has been getting a lot of these kind of hands. Suited connectors. Flop comes 6-4. Deuce, two diamonds. Daniel Negrano has flopped a straight here, and Elia Lezra has top set. And he bets 5,500. 5, What's Daniel going to do with his straight? The absolute nuts at this point? It raises to 15,000. There's also two diamonds out there, so Daniel's thinking Ellie could have a flush draw. Or maybe an overpair, pair of sevens, pair of eights, maybe ace six. He's hoping Ellie raises back. 95? 9,500 to call. Please raise, Ellie. Please yeah. raise me. <laughs> hey, he's just going to call here. He's going to let a card come off. Ellie's convinced he has the best hand here. Turns a five. Neither player is happy about that five. Dan's going to bet 30000 here. But on the flop, Daniel had the absolute nuts. Now, if for some reason Ellie had the seven, eight of diamonds, a hand like that, or maybe ace, three of diamonds, he would be tying Daniel now and have um, a free roll at catching a diamond on the river. That's why Daniel's shaking his head. Ellie also doesn't like a five. Because Daniel could have any of those hands. Daniel could have a 7, 8 of diamonds or ace 3 of diamonds. So Ellie's thinking about, do I raise here with my 3, 6? I don't think he can.
As I said, neither player like that five. And he calls here. Ellie's just going to call and hope the board pairs on the river. Okay, then. <laughs> Daniel doesn't want to see a diamond. And the board does pair with the deuce. Another bad beat for Daniel Negrano. <laughs> and he's almost feeling it. How much you playing, bro? In the low hundred range. David Gray has done something that all the players don't like. Daniel Legrano wanted Elliot Lezer to answer when he said, how much you're playing? Thought he might be able to get some kind of read from the way Ellie answered. Right. And David Gray very quickly gave him the amount. Check. Check. Ellie's only problem here is how much to bet. Sixty. This is good. I mean, just why don't I flop the nuts every hand I play and then come like bad and bad? This is getting creepy. Flop like forceful. Just getting really creepy. Flop the absolute joint. It really is creepy. Yeah. It's happened a lot to Daniel. Atrocious luck. But Daniel could save $60,000. He should be realizing at this point that people aren't bluffing at him. If he calls this 60000 he's hoping for a split. Maybe you got the same hand. There you go, yeah. Maybe you got nothing. Every hand plays like this. If Ellie had a pair of sevens or any over pair, he wouldn't be betting yet. Daniel calls. There he goes. He's just getting crazy. Negrano on the wrong side of another big pot. Yeah, I, I, tried, I thought I was sucking you in. Yeah, you in. <laughs> Negrano's 10-9 at hearts, right, raised to 2,000. Lingwin calls with his pocket eights. That's for sure. Or a sausage. That's for sure. You'd have to pick around it. I don't eat the cheese either. Oh, you don't eat cheese anymore, right? You told me that. David Gray keeps on talking. Oh, you got that. You're drawing dead on that bet. <laughs> You're not over 140 I'm yet. 140. Yeah, I'm over 140. All right. I got a shot. He's got a 170 number. I mean, you got to be over Lifetime. Yeah. What's if I'm mean? ever over... Oh, somebody call. If you're ever over 170? I lose like 20,000 to him. If he I, laid me 20 to I'm 1. ever under I laid him 20 to 1. He gave me $1,000. How are you going to win? <laughs> no, he paid me already. And if, oh, I ever, okay. if I'm ever over, then I got to pay him... Uh, <laughs> The whole thing back. That's it. Yes, stiff. Yes. Daniel Legrano flops a straight, and Eric Lindgren flops a set. Well, he bets 4,000. You can make me that bet. Lindgren calls. One more time, Daniel Legrano flops the nuts. And look at this. <laughs> Eric Lindgren makes quads. It's happening again to Daniel Legrano. He's flopped the nuts one more time, and Eric Lindgren, like Gus Hansen, has made quads. And Eric Lindgren is not acting as fast as Gus Hansen did. Eric Lindgren doesn't know what to do here. Trying to figure out what his best play is. Daniel Legrano's bet 12000 And Eric's thinking about, should I raise right here? How strong is Daniel's hand? Uh, Eric just calls. Like Probably putting Daniel on a queen. Ace of hearts on the river. <laughs> Daniel again believes he's got the best hand. He hopes that Eric's made aces and queens. Eric's saying, please bet again, Daniel. I was inside before you. Okay, John. The ground bet's 25,000. 25,000. Eric again taking a lot of time here. You play the tournament today, John? Or did you... All in. No, no, no. Wow. This is getting so sick. How can I flop the nuts every single hand and lose? I mean, what in the world is going on? Are you kidding me? That was a no. 
You gotta be just no, kidding. Have you played any of the bloggers? Daniel, who's generally very mild mannered, has reached the end of his rope here. Oh, yeah. This is about the fourth, fifth time that he's flopped the nuts and he's gotten raised on the river. What good is it? He's called every time. Oh, brother, man. Now, if any time he shouldn't call, it's this time. You guys just be kidding me. There is nothing that he can beat except a bluff. Thanks. Eric is not raising with ace queen. He's not raising with queen jack. Oh, man, this is just so sick. He might raise with king 10. How much is it? He doesn't have king 10. We know that. Daniel has eliminated that hand. There was no flush draw on the flop. Just go so sick. Daniel should realize in this hand that he's beat. But How much is it? You just get shell shocked after a while. Yeah. You think that someone sometime is gonna make a move on you. This is nuts. How can I flop the nuts every hand and well, lose? How can I always lose? <laughs> I gotta figure out a hand that he has. Hang on, this can take me a second. Ace eight he could have. Dan, you gotta figure out a hand you could beat. <laughs> Not that he could right, have. 25 <laughs> on the turn, right? No. 12 on the turn. King 10, I don't think you're gonna raise me. Pocket jacks. He might raise me. Why isn't this an easy lay down for Daniel, Gabe? He's just shell shocked. You constantly feel that after you have bad luck, that people are going to take shots at you. And he must feel oh, that Eric Lindgren is capable of taking a shot here. But the question he's not really asking himself is what did Eric Lindgren call on the flop and the turn with? Mm. Could he have a hand like Jack 10, Jack 9, and just be raising here, trying to take away the pot? Seems like Daniel's convincing himself that that's what's going on. Well, it's a $72,000 decision. 72 7 to be exact. Flopping the nuts. My credit's good, so I can get more money. <laughs> it would make this pot, by itself, oh. almost a quarter million dollars. What in the world do you got? I don't know. No idea. Seventy-two-seven, right? Man. Doesn't look like Daniel's going to get away from this. I just don't. I I don't know what he has. I have no idea. I'm just going to call. Full house is good. Four eights. Four eights, that's about right. This is getting sick. This is so sick. When Daniel watches this, I think <laughs> he's going to realize I I what a bad call that was. I never see so many cold deck that Daniel run. I have you? I never see that. It's just getting absurd. Gus so Hansen opens up with pocket there. fives. He raises to 2100. The ground with pocket sixes raises to 5,000. Five. Action falls around to Esfandiari with his ace queen. Out of position against Gus and Daniel Negrano. That's exactly what Antonio is thinking about. He's out of position against Gus and Daniel, and he's throwing away ace queen. Not going to put in 4,400 more. And Hansen calls the 2,900. Yeah, probably not. Flop comes nine six five. Wow! Oh. Both players have flop sets. <laughs> Daniel's got three oh, sixes. Like Gus has got three fives. Gus is going to lose a lot of money in this hand. Only thing that could save him is maybe a seven or an eight coming up and slowing down the action on the turn. The ground about eight thousand dollars. Good morning, Dr. Gray. In the middle of this hand, David Gray has showed up and starts to do his dance moves behind Gus. 
This guy is a cartoon guy. There's so many people so that can do it, you know? Augusta's trying to figure out what to do here. He's going to raise. raise here. That's the right move. You don't want someone coming in here with a hand like 9 8. He raises the $26,000. $26,000. And Daniel is just going to call. He's going to let a card come off. I like this move by Daniel. Gus is convinced he has the best hand now. Turns another five. Wow. <laughs> Gus has made quads. <laughs> Gus Hansen has quads, and Daniel Negrano has sixes full. Unbelievable. This is trouble. Trouble in River City for Daniel Negrano. The previous hand, I had the queen nine deuce. So I won 21 and I lost four, so I won 17. The other players seem oblivious to what's going on in this hand. Hansen bets 24,000. I think Daniel Legrano is putting Gus Hansen on a hand like 7-5 or 8-5. He's putting Gus Hansen on 3-5s right now. And he's thinking about how do I extract the most money from Gus Hansen here? Gus is trying to appear as calm as he can with quads. He's not giving anything up. The ground calls at 24,000. Daniel's slow playing his full house. Daniel thinks he has the best hand. And the river's at eight. Both players like that card. Both players want the other player to make a straight. And Gus checks his quads. Great play by Gus. You got your lost two. I lost two and I lost two. Very one four. Now if Gus did have seven five, Gus has made a straight here. The main thing is Daniel feels he has the best hand. And there's no reason he shouldn't feel he has the best hand. He's feeling the right amount to bet is $65,000. I'm all in. Huh? I'm all in. How much more is it? That shocked Daniel. Wow. Count, count, count his. Wasn't expecting it. The pot now stands at over $400,000. Even without Daniel calling, this stands as the biggest pot in the history of high-stakes poker. And if Daniel calls, it'll be almost 600000 Unbelievable. Daniel knows that Gus is a loose player. But I don't think he thinks he's loose enough to make this kind of bet on a bluff. How much? 167 Daniel's got to know that Gus has a hand. What he's trying to figure out is, does it beat his hand? He might have the nuts. You're missing a big pot here, Eli. It's a big pot here. You just raised me 167. It's a big pot. I better have something if I'm going to call, right? Daniel pointing out to Ellie and Doyle that something's going on here. Yeah. You think they'd know. Oh, you can do it better. Of this Buddy, this is if, if I'm if I lose this pot, it's a cooler. So can't feel too bad. If I lose this pot, it's a pretty bad cooler. Pocket fives, pocket nines, maybe like pocket eights. Ooh, that'd be sick too. That would be sick. Well, you're right, Daniel. It's one of the above. <laughs> yeah. What else would Gus Hansen be raising you $165,000 with? And Daniel decides to call. Shows in the five. So you had one out. <laughs> you believe you. I believe you. I, I wasn't too happy on the flop. But oh. once the turn came up. Wasn't too happy. Meanwhile, he rakes in a pot over $575,000.